Hi everyone and welcome back for Flipped Teacher Professional Learning video 4. Uh, this video will continue on from the previous one, looking at Google Drive, uh, some of the features and the ways in which we can use it in the classroom. Now the first thing that I want to say before we get into Google Drive, and I suggest that you open up your Google Drive as I say this, while I say this, much of what I'm saying in relation to Google Drive also works the same on the iPad app. There is a full range of apps for uh, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Slides, um, and much of the functionality is exactly the same. It might be done slightly differently, but much of the functionality is the same. Uh, so if you are in a one-to-one -one iPad situation, um, much of what these students will need to do, they can learn from watching these video. Uh, these videos, they will access Google Drive, obviously, just through the app rather than through their Department of Education portal. Uh, they'll access it straight from the app. Now moving along from that, um, I mentioned in the previous video, and I only mentioned it briefly, uh, when we were looking at the options that you have through the, um, the gear icon over here, one of the options was download drive. And I said to be aware of how much space that takes up, and if you're not sure, to check down in the bottom left hand corner. Now the reason I say that is that um, teachers and students in New South Wales have been given a 10 terabyte limit. Now to put that into perspective, a typical three to four minute pop song is between three and four megabytes. A thousand megabytes is a gigabyte and a thousand gigabytes is a terabyte. So we have a massive amount of storage. Now in the bottom left hand corner, it does give you an indicator of how much you've used. And if you hover over, it will give you the breakdown. So at the moment, all of my space is being used in Google Drive. Um, but if you have a Gmail account attached to this, you can see the breakdown there. And this applies in your personal G Drive account as well. Now, one of the icons or one of the columns in the file view is the file size. And you can see that all of these have a hash there, a, a hyphen there. That indicates that it takes up no size or in the case of the folders, you need to go in further to have a look at the breakdown. But you can see that there are specific files listed that show up as taking no space. Now the reason for that is that any file created within Google Drive, uh, that is one of the Google Doc um, file types, as in you know, Google Docs, Google Sheets, uh, Google, uh, Google Slides, they automatically um, are assigned a nil size value when it comes to their storage. So anything that you add in will only take up space if it is not in the Google Drive format. So this includes videos, um, if you upload a Word document, um, a PDF document, Microsoft Excel, things like that, they will take space. But there's a trick. You can go into the settings. One of the options in the settings is this second one here, convert uploads. If you have this square here ticked, any file you upload that Google is able to do it to will convert the uploaded file into a Google Docs editor format. So what that does is if, for example, you upload a Microsoft Word document, it will automatically convert that document into a Google Docs file type, the, which means it will take up no space. So let me uh, let me upload a file, a, a Word, a Microsoft Word file, so I can show you what this actually looks like when you do it. Uh, here we go. So I'll drag in. This is just an assessment cover sheet from uh, when I was at uni. You can see it uploading. It takes 2.95 megabytes. It's processing it. It'll pop up. There we go. It's now done there. You can see that although it says down here 2.95 megabytes, it's now taking up zero space because Google Drive has converted it into a Google Docs format. It's a really, really useful function. Uh, and if you are someone who has used a lot of um, Excel or Microsoft Word documents throughout your teaching career, this can save a lot of space. Not that space is an issue for us with 10 terabytes, but it can help you save a lot of space. Now, you will notice as well that it hasn't duplicated the file. You don't have a Microsoft Word version and a Google Documents version, which is really good. You don't have to worry about that. Let me just delete that. Click on Trash. Gone. Uh, now, to upload a file, obviously, you can 
for example, just click and drag, it will pop up with that little thing. You may have seen it there. It said incoming. It will give you the indicator of how much, how quickly it's downloading. You can queue up as many documents as you want, um, and they will upload in order. Let me just get rid of that one again. Trash. Now, if you are someone who does like to keep space down, you can go into your trash. You can select all, and you've got the option here to delete forever or to restore. Um, obviously, if you delete something by mistake, you come into the trash, find it, you can click on restore, but if you know that you don't want that ever again, uh, you can just select all, and you can either go empty trash or delete forever. Either way. That's how you upload, that's how you delete, and that's how you restore. Um, but that's also a bit of an indicator as to how you can keep track of how much space you're taking up. The other thing that I want to look at um, very quickly is in relation to shared computers. If you are like myself, you use a shared computer at home. If someone else has a Google account um, that they are signed into Google Chrome with, you'll find that if you come up here in the top right hand corner, if you click on your photo, you will see potentially that there are multiple accounts listed. So at the top, because I'm in my education portal, uh, my education drive account, at the top is my education account. Underneath that is listed my personal one. And if I was to click on that, it would take me to my personal Google Drive account. You have the option to add an additional account, and you also have the option to sign out. So if you're in a situation where you have gone in through your staff portal to access Google Drive, and for some reason it has taken you into somebody else's Google Drive account, click on Add Account, fill in the details, it will take you then to the DET portal login page, put in your normal uh, username and password there, uh, and it will add that account. The other option, if you can't get access to your account because someone else's account is overriding yours. Uh, you can come up to the top of Google Chrome, the settings icon in the top right hand corner here, the three bars underneath each other. Uh, click on settings. And the option that you are looking for is to disconnect your Google account. Um, if this is on your school laptop computer, if someone else has used your school laptop, that will be the option that you want. The other alternative is that you can add a person on the internet browser. So you can actually add an account on the internet browser. So for you, um, your partner, son, daughter, whatever the situation may be, um, you can add a specific account and that way when that person logs in, they will have access to a Google Chrome that is slightly different to yours because it will be set for them. Their bookmarks um, should be their bookmarks, not your bookmarks. Uh, I have heard that that's been a bit of an issue for a few people, but just be aware that you can get around it that way. The other thing that I want to go through today with you very briefly is how to add a new file uh, or how to create a new file. This big red button that says new, click on that. New folder, file upload, folder upload if you want to upload an entire folder worth of documents, and you create a new Google Dive, new Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, essentially use Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint. More gives you Google Forms, Google Drawings, and My Maps, and we'll come to those later on. The file upload, that's the alternative way of doing it if you don't want to drag and drop. Um, and the same with the folder, you can drag an entire folder in here if you want to. Um, if you want to create a new folder for organizing things, you simply click on that option there. Um, it will bring up a blank um, icon here, give it a name, call it, I'm just going to call this test, click create, tells you it's working and there it is, it's created there and you can then go and do whatever you want with it as far as sharing um, and adding documents into that. That's all the time we have for in this video, we'll see you next time.